Well, what's in a name? To the victims of pedophile priests, a lot. Earlier this month, the Pope said he is outraged by the decades of child sexual abuse and cover-ups in the Catholic Church in Ireland. The issues here in the U.S. have been well publicized for years. But just how outraged is the Catholic Church here? In a Fox 6 exclusive, you're about to see why some say the Milwaukee Archdiocese is putting church leaders who covered up the crimes on a pedestal. They were victimized. I was a student at uh, St. John Vianney Grade School. Many years ago. I was in sixth grade at the time. Innocent children. He would look at them in the, in the bath and, and pick them. In Catholic schools. Father Murphy molested me when I was 13, 14, 15 years old. And I was uh, taken out of class and was sexually assaulted at the school. Who looked up to the men of the cloth who molested them? He said, it's okay, I'm like God, but don't tell anybody, this will be our secret. But the sexual assaults did not stay a secret. The pedophile priests were eventually exposed, and as is now well documented, the bishops covered up the crimes from other Catholics and from the community. You allowed each of these priests to continue in ministry in some capacity, did you not? Yes. The Milwaukee Archdiocese is one of the most notorious cases. From 1977 to 2002, Archbishop Rembert Weekland shuffled numerous pedophile priests around to protect the good name of the church to the detriment of countless children. The practice was to put uh, uh, the priests in ministry, back in ministry, either a parish or a chaplaincy, and not tell um, the laity that you knew that he was an offender? I would say that was the practice. Weakland was so insensitive to the plight of the young victims, in 1989 he wrote in his Catholic Herald column, sometimes not all adolescent victims are so innocent. Followed six years later by the stunning statement to the Milwaukee Journal, the boy gets a little older and the perpetrator loses interest. Then is when the squealing comes in and you have to deal with it. But before Archbishop Weakland's widespread scandals, Archbishop William Cousins masterminded the cover-ups in Milwaukee. Just over a decade after Arthur Budzinski was molested by Father Lawrence Murphy at St. John's School for the Deaf in St. Francis in the 60s, he and other victims went to Archbishop Cousins with the allegations, assuming the Archbishop would find child molestation unconscionable. I thought that they would really listen to my side. I found out they're not going to listen to my side. They listened to the other side and supported them. Cousins was very angry at us. He was mad at us. Wow, I can't believe, I can believe that. When the allegations against Father Murphy piled so high they could no longer be ignored, Archbishop Cousins moved him up north where he molested more children. And when convicted child molester Father Siegfried Wodera, the priest who molested Sharon Tarantino, was caught while still on probation for child sex crimes, Archbishop Cousins quietly dumped him on the innocent kids of California. And there were other cases, other cover-ups, other children who became victims because Archbishop Cousins and Archbishop Weakland put the pedophiles in the church above protecting the children. So let's name a building after him. The Cousin Center in Milwaukee, the headquarters of the Archdiocese, is named for the Archbishop. And on Van Buren Street downtown, the pastoral center at the primary cathedral in Milwaukee bears the name of Rembert Weekland. It's very hurtful. Victims of the pedophile priests are constantly reminded of the crimes and the cover-ups that stole their innocence and scarred them for life. It speaks of a, a great deal of arrogance and kind of one last way for the church to say um, that what happened to you really doesn't matter. It's like a, we don't exist, that the, the survivors, the victims, don't exist to our church in Milwaukee. Which is why SNAP, the survivors network of those abused by priests, is going to ask the incoming archbishop later this week to change the names of the Cousin Center and the Weakland Center. We're never going to hear, ever, uh, you know, something like the Tiger Woods, you know, marital institute. You're never going to have to walk by a building and go, oh, look, there's the uh, Richard Nixon School of Government, or there's the Bernie Madoff uh, Center for Business Ethics. There's, there's a good reason for that. These are people who brought great dishonor 
to their work and professions. You don't name buildings after them. Archbishop Weekland didn't answer the door when I knocked to get his opinion. But he did pick up the phone. Are you comfortable still having it named after you at this point? The Archbishop told me he hadn't really thought about it and believes there are other more important issues. But for the children who are now adults and who now know that years ago the church leaders who could have protected them chose instead to put them in danger, the names of those men proudly displayed on church buildings are a constant reminder that their innocence was expendable. This would be a very basic way to hold someone to account, is to say that you know you don't deserve this, this type of recognition. If they felt any type of compassion for us, they would do something about it. And that's what the church is all about, is to, to show compassion to those who need it. The Archdiocese said they couldn't make anyone available for an interview for the story, despite one week's notice. They did say Bishop Listecki might be available for an interview in a couple of weeks after he's installed. We're working on scheduling that. As for the Cousins Center, the Archdiocese representative did say she was told the name hasn't been addressed because the building's up for sale and, in her words now, good excuse or not. My question is, does SNAP have certain names that they'd rather these buildings be named? Well, they do. One suggestion they're talking about is uh, St. Peter Damien. He's a priest who thousands of years ago spoke out against sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. But SNAP says there are plenty of local Catholics who are very deserving as well. Great story. It's good to bring up that point, you know. You can see it from their, from their eyes.